Uh, we want to talk about pointers today, but to do that, we're going to first take a look at the, the configuration of memory, and then we're going to go through it and understand exactly how pointers work. I'll try to make it as simple as possible, and then um, we'll find out exactly how things work. One thing you need to know is that you have to turn your cell phones off. Just give me a second. There you go. One thing you need to know is that pointers are no different with any other thing. Pointers are simply variables. So if you know how to work with an integer, you know how to work with a pointer. Don't give pointers extra credit. Keep that in mind. Let's start. OK? So the memory in your computer is a chain of bytes. It's an array of bytes. If you notice that you didn't have any arrays of any structures in your test. I'm going to tell to the other prof to take care of that. But anyway, so what I'm saying is that uh, it's an array of bytes, characters that we say in, in, in C language, small integers, right? And it's ginormous, depending on what, uh, how much memory you have, that's how big your mem the number is going to get. So each byte is tagged with a number. The very first byte in your RAM in your RAM, the one that you paid money and you made it 16 gigabytes, that thing, OK? Uh, that, the first one is the, the, the sequence number is 0. And it keep, goes up to 16 gigabytes, OK? Now, we are somewhere in this uh, diagram in the memory, halfway through memory, 23 million, 23 million, 423,100 th byte of memory. And then I'm going to just put the rest of the, the three digits at the end. So whatever you see, the number that you see, 113 over here, is actually 23,423,111. Okay? So that's what's going to be the, the sequence number of the byte. It starts from zero, comes from there, and goes further in memory wherever it is. We are somewhere halfway through our memory. Are we okay with this? So each byte is tagged with a number. That number, that sequence number, we call it an address. OK? So you put an ampersand, and I say call that address of. That's actually what it is. So when you put, put scanf ampersand cnt, it actually means give me the address of cnt. It goes and finds out where cnt is and extracts the address. So essentially, when you are writing a program, whenever you create a variable, Whenever you create a variable, depending on where the memory is, is available, operating system allocates a piece of memory and gives it to you. You say int var, someplace in memory it occupies four bytes, because an integer needs four bytes, right? And puts it over there. Therefore, what is the address of var now? 108. The address is 108. Don't count the whole thing. Just It's the beginning of it, right? And when you create a double, the dvar that we have over here, obviously it needs eight bytes. And what is the address of dvar now? 132. We all know that, right? Are we OK with this? Any problem with this? All right. Now, these, when I talk about an integer, what is an integer? What is an integral value? When we say an integer, what is an integer? Can you tell me what is an integer? An integer is a? Whole number starting from going from negative to positive numbers, right? Minus 50, that's an integer. When I talk about a double value, what's a double value? It's a floating point number, 2.356 or minus 3.592, <laughs> right? These are the values. An address, by nature, because it's a sequence number of a byte, it cannot be negative. It doesn't make sense. Can I say? Minus third chair in class, you can't do that. When you are counting stuff, they're always positive, right? Because of that fact, the addresses are always positive numbers. And they, be, they are integers. They are exactly like integers. But they behave a bit differently. We're going to see soon. Because of that fact, if we want to hold an address in a variable, we need to create a specific type of variable for it. Uh, well, I'm just going to use my imagination. Let's say that type of variable, I'm going to call it an address pointer, PTR. OK? An address pointer is an integer. I'm not calling it an integer because it's 
only positive, and it behaves a tiny bit different than an integer, but it's an integer number. Okay, um, we'll come to it, we'll see soon. Because of that, I am giving it another name, so it's a type. I'm gonna say address pointer PTR, there we go. Four bytes in memory is created, and it's called PTR. Any difference between the two? Other than the color, anybody colorblind here? No, don't laugh. I have it like, I think it's one of five people or something like that, or uh, it's, it's colorblind. It's a very normal thing, okay? So I just what, don't want to keep going green, red, red, green, and then somebody over there says, what the heck is talking about, right? So, so um, it happened to me many times, yeah. So what I'm saying is that like this PTR that we see over here is exactly like VAR. They are identical things. One is called PTR, the other one's called VAR. And DVAR is the same thing. They are pieces of memory, and you can put stuff in it. I can say VAR is equal to 32. A 32 goes in that variable, right? Okay, I can say DVAR is equal to 2.35. 2.35 is going to go in here, right? Are we okay with this? All right. But addresses, the PTR variable that we have over here, they are designed to hold the address of other things. So when you say PTR is set to address of var, this happens. Take a look. When you set a pointer, an address pointer, to address of another variable, it goes and sees where the variable is, it puts the, it puts the address in there. What does that PTR is now, what, what does it have? It has address of var in it. Are we okay with this? Any problem with this? Are we okay down to here? Beautiful. Now I can, there are two ways. Either you know where I live, I'm gonna say come to Farnad's house. Right? Or I'm going to tell you to come to, I don't know, three rota crescent. And you're going to come over there, and that's going to be my house. So I'll give you either the address of house for that's house, so you have to go to target of that address to come, we have a barbecue. Or I'm going to say, come to for that's house if you know where I am. So when I tell you, put 234 in var, you know where var is, you put it in there. Sometimes you're a stranger to var, you don't know where var is. That's when I tell you, come to the address of where, which means I use the address of where. Where is the address of where now? Where is the address of where now? Where is the address of var now? Where, is, where did you put it? In PTR. Are we okay? So if I want to actually put something in there, using the address, I have to say target of PTR is 2345. Therefore, because I said go to target of PTR, I didn't see in here I'm saying PTR is set to address of something and PTR is set to something. But when I say target of PTR is set to something, it goes where PTR is pointing to and puts it right in there. Are we okay with this? Any problem with this? Seriously, are we good? All right. Surprise. So as a result, if I print var now, what's going to get printed? Perfect. That's exactly what's going to happen. 2, 3, 4, 5 is going to get printed. What if I print target of PTR? What's going to get printed? Don't answer, think and then answer. Target of PTR, what is target of PTR? Target of PTR, why people like to get confused when it's so simple and straightforward? I didn't say print PTR. I said print target of PTR. So it goes to PTR, it sees, oh, there is an address in there. It goes to the target, prints the target. What's gonna get printed? Two, three, four, five. All right? All right? Exactly the same thing. So, potatoes, potatoes, right? It doesn't matter what you do. You can mention, I want to deal with the variable, or I want to deal with the target of the address of variable. Potatoes, potatoes, exactly the same. 
it does not make any difference. Are we okay with this? Now, I don't know if you remember from uh, 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 the beginning of the semester, this, the format specifier. If I wanted to print an unsigned integer, what was the format for it? I should have asked that in a, in a test. Percent U, yeah. Percent U prints an unsigned integer, an integer that cannot be negative. Remember that I told you like if like character could be from 0 to 255 or minus 128 to 127. If you have an unsigned character, unsigned integer, you print it with percent u. Okay? So because we know a pointer is an unsigned integer, what would get what will get printed if I print PTR? 108. Now the address is going to get printed. So when I talk about the pointer itself, then the address is going to get printed. I said print the PTR. In here I'm saying print the target of PTR. Target of PTR is where PTR is pointing to. PTR by itself is an address, therefore the address is going to get printed. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Finished. Pointers are this. Done. If you understand this, now I, again, I just, I just taught you what is two plus two. Now we're gonna build a missile together, okay? So, so it's gonna like this is the basics of exactly what a pointer is. But I'm gonna use this and keep going. Now this has some flaws. The notations that I put over there that I just imagined they, they have they have some flaws. Let's try something. What if I want to actually deal with my uh, double value? I had a pointer called PTR, correct? So I am putting the address of DV, DV, the DVAR into PTR now. What is the address of DVAR? So 132 goes over here, correct? Therefore, I can use the same terminology and say target of PTR is set to a big double value, correct? But think about it for a second, please. Think about it for a second. What do I have in PTR? An integer number. How the devil it's suppo it is supposed to know what is sitting at the target? Is it a four-byte integer or it's an eight-byte double? or it's a single character, or it's a structure. Nobody knows. If I tell you 392 Young Street, do you know what I'm talking about? Is it a government building, or it's a small house, or it's a store, it's a convenience store? Nobody knows. I have to tell you what is at the target so you can go and deal with it, correct? Do we understand this? So what we had, it had a flaw. This example wasn't good. We can't do this. We cannot have a general pointer holding the address of everything and then deal with it. I can't do that. I have to mention what type of pointer I have. So I cannot put an address pointer. I have to actually mention I have an integer pointer, PTR, which means PTR knows that it's only supposed to point to integers. Therefore, when I say it's address of var, it's going to put it over there. It's not going to give me an error. If I actually try to put the address of dvar over there, it's going to say, what are you doing? It's a double. I only hold integers, integer addresses. Don't put a double address in me. It's going to actually give you an error or a warning. OK? And therefore, everything else makes sense. I can actually set the value to whatever I want. I can actually print it using the target of it. I am saying print an integer target of PTR. And because PTR is an integer pointer, there is no problem with that. Are we OK with this? And then, of course, if I print the value, it's going to be exactly the same thing, but no difference. So this is exactly what we've talked about before. The difference is that I did not put over here address pointer. It is actually specifically integer pointer. Now if I want to actually hold the 
do the exact same thing with that double thingy, what I need to do is to create a double pointer DPTR. It's going to occupy some other space for me somewhere and call it DPTR. So DPTR is to hold double addresses. PTR is to hold integer addresses. Now, if I had a student, I could say uh, struct student pointer, which means give me a pointer that I can hold the address of a big student structure with 55 things in it. It doesn't matter as long as you mention. But one important thing, one important thing, the size of PTR and DPTR, are they different? No, they're both four bytes. The envelope, the place that you put the address on, the size of the address doesn't matter. If it goes to a government building, you don't have to write 55 lines of address. The size of address is always the same. It's the target that is different, right? That's why they are all the same size. They're all four bytes. And then after this, you can do all the things that you wanted to do. You can, you can actually set the DPR to the address of DVAR, that is 132. It's not going to have any problem, and do all the rest of the stuff. Put the target, put the, a double value into target of DPTR, no problem, because it knows the, that the target of that address is a double. It's going to put it over there. You can actually print that one, and you'll see the value that's going to get printed is exactly that. And if you print the target of DPTR, the same thing. And if you print the address, 132 is going to get printed. But as you see, the way I am printing the double pointer is exactly the same way I printed the integer pointer. They are both with percent %u because they are both unsigned integer values. Are we OK with this? Do we understand the concept? You want to have a moment before I open up Visual Studio and I actually code this? I'm going to do the exact same thing, exact same code. I'm going to write it over there. We'll see what happens. Are we OK, one? Are we OK, two? All right, so 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 we said integer variable. I created a variable, right? Then I created an integer pointer. What was the pointer? Integer pointer PTR, we called it, right? Then I said PTR is set to uh, address of var, correct? It's the exact same thing, right? And then I said target of. PTR is set to, what was the value? 2345, 2345. And finally, what am I, why am I not just copying from here? There we go. Let's walk through this and ha see how it's going to work out. All right? So I'm going to compile the code. All right, I had a warning. I don't know what was that, but it doesn't matter at the moment. Hmm. All right, so we'll come over here. Variable is that value, DPTR. It's not pointing to anything. It's garbage. Because it's garbage, it is pointing to somewhere wild. You don't know where. There is some number in there, right? And if you try to put something in it right now, you know what happens? You're going to see that very much soon. It says segmentation fault, core dumped which means you had a pointer, an address that wasn't valid. It wasn't in your territory and tried to put something in it. As if you open some neighbor's house and you're trying to go over there and go to washroom over there. Somebody's going to take you out with a baseball bat. So that's what essentially segmentation for our code dump. He says, hey, 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 you're going out of your segment. What are you doing? And it stops you. OK? That's why it's garbage like that. But as soon as I set the target of PTR to where var is, if you look at that one, it actually has a proper address. It's not question mark, question mark, question mark anymore. And then I set the target of PTR to 2345. 
And as you see now, var has two, three, four, five in it. And when I print var, it's going to be two, three, four, five. When I print target of PTR, it's going to be two, three, four, five. And when I print PTR, that's where the address of the memory is. That's where actually my memory, my variable is sitting in memory, 94, 9,432,396 byte in memory is where var is. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Now I'm gonna start confusing the heck out of you. Okay, are we okay with this? Those things don't exist in C language. What you see, pointer, address of, target of, we don't have such things in C language. I just made it up. How did I made it up? Through a beautiful feature called, what is it called? Define statements. Look at this, pointer lecture.c.h, you see that? Take a look. Ta-da! <laughs> actually, we don't need this. I didn't want to even use this, so that's not needed. Now, let's actually go over here and see what the heck did I do. Okay, now, address of, you know what it is. You've done it already. What is address of? Ampersand. So I'll take those things off and put the real thing. All right? Pointer. What is pointer? Pointer is an asterisk. So you take that off and you put an asterisk. And these two ladies and gentlemen together, you see many people do this. Never in my, not my class anymore, <laughs> but never in your life do that. Always remember the asterisk belongs to the integer, not to the name of the variable. The variable name is PTR, its type is integer pointer. Remember I told you never name the characters, actually say its meanings? So that's integer pointer PTR. It's not integer asterisk PTR. Don't do, the, don't do that. Actually say its name. Integer pointer PTR. Are we okay with that? Now, <laughs> the confusing part, they said, okay, now how can we confuse the heck out of everyone? They said, let's put asterisk for ta target of two. This is exactly the same thing that you have done before, but in a proper way. Okay? Now, let's see what the heck is going on. Asterisk. How do we identify if an asterisk means pointer, or it means target of, or it means multiplication? How do we do that? It's very easy. Let me show you how. First of all, we don't need this anymore. Should I have the other one? Give me a second. Ah, what did I do? Wait, 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 wait. This is the one, right? Control F5. Yes, and then I'm going to say, um, what do I say? Far that zero one. Far that pointer stuff. Let's see. So these are, this is not the real one, people, okay? Please remember that. And now, okay. When we talked about, uh, you had a question. Yeah. Uh, when you change these two asterisks and you compile it again, yeah. the address changed, why? Oh, it's, it's like you go to, I, I don't know, a hotel and rent a room. You're going to get the exact same room every time. You are the same person going to, I don't know, Holiday Inn. Why not? They're not giving you room number 132 that they always gave you. Computer is a hotel, and the hotel manager is the operating system. Every time you want to rent a variable, it's going to give you a piece of memory that is available. Unless you pay, bribe them so they can give you the ocean view one, but, <laughs> but that's not the case in here. So once they give 
Every single time, it's going to be a different one. Every single time you run it, it's going to be somewhere else in memory. That's why we need the operator address of. No, because every time the program ends, the maid comes and cleans your room and gives it to someone else next time. <laughs> Nothing is wasted. Actually, it is wasted that every single time they give you the same room, you go get the same room. Nobody's going to get this one I've seen forever. That's not going to happen. OK? Are we OK with this? Every single time the program ends, everything's done, cleared, and someone else is going to use it. That's all the multitask systems, right? What I wanted to do. Uh, yeah, change is the proper thing, so I'm going to take this off. Again, pointer is asterisk, and it belongs to the type. Address of is ampersand. It's an operator extracts the address. Target of is again asterisk. It's right beside the variable name. And that's that. And the point that you are making, if I run it again, this time it's at this address. Where if I run it again, so this one is at this address and that one is at this address. Every sing stay. Every single time that it runs, <laughs> every single time that it runs, it goes somewhere else, right? Are we okay with this? All right. That's your actual beautiful question. Thank you. Uh, I rarely have that question in class. Um, so we were talking about asterisks. How to identify what asterisks mean? Well, what the devil? <laughs> What's happening here? Am I making? I think my keyboard is going nuts. Okay, slowly. All right, good. So, when you look at an asterisk, and life is beautiful, nothing's wrong. You go, ah, I know that asterisk. That means it's multiplication. Okay? A is equal to B multiplied by C. All right? Are we okay with this? Whenever you see an asterisk and you keep going to left, and the very first thing that you hit is a type. So if I actually write it like that, it works. See? If I do this, take a look at this. Compile and run. Perfectly OK. Different address, though. Right? Perfectly OK. So when you take the asterisk and you keep going to left, and the first thing that you hit is a type, it means that asterisk belongs to that type, and together they mean pointer. OK? That's what it means. Let's go back. So as soon as you see this, empty all the spaces and put it right over there. Together they mean pointer. So if you have a type at left side of an asterisk, it means integer pointer, double pointer, student pointer. It could be anything. So. It could be an integer pointer. I'm just going to give you different examples. Um, I can have character pointer str. I can have um, struct car pointer fardad's car. OK, so that's a pointer to fardad's car. OK, if car is a structure that has all the information. Are we OK with this? So if you have an asterisk, and at left side of an asterisk, now I told you. Lots of people do it like this. Bad people they are. There is no asterisk for that score. For that score is a pointer. Asterisk belongs to the type. It's struct car pointer. It has nothing to do with, to the, to do with the variable. Remember that. Are we okay with it? Are, okay are you okay with this? Are we okay? I need lots of water, man. All right, next thing. When you have an asterisk, you go, what the heck is that? OK? It means target of. The first one, life is beautiful. So B multiplied by, what is that? That means target of. 
and that means C is a pointer. Okay? So, if the asterisk doesn't make sense, if the asterisk doesn't make sense, so let's make it even worse. Does that asterisk make sense? Say target of. A is equal to target of B multiplied by target of C. If it doesn't make sense, it means target of. In this scenario, A is a variable, B is a pointer, C is a pointer. And B and C, hopefully, are the pointers to the type of variable A. Hopefully, not necessarily, but hopefully. Are we okay with this? So, again, multiplication, integer pointer, this is character pointer, and this is struct car pointer. And this means A is set to target of B multiply by target of C, which means B and, it's a little smaller, B and C are pointers. Now, if I see somebody's writing something like this, I'm going to ask them to resubmit the program. It's because when you're confusing the heck out of everyone. Like when you are writing, writing it, write it properly, write A, target of B, multiply by target of C. Like this, it's not confusing that much. Because you see they're stick together, you know that. Target of B, so this is a pointer, you know that, okay? That's why the spacing and stuff are very important. But again, some, I wanted to say idiots, but I'm not going to say that. Some people actually write like that. Some good people, very nice, respectable people, <laughs> write like that. And, and for that, you have to always be aware. Are we OK with this? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? Sold. So now we know the syntax, real syntax of pointers. Now let's look at the side effects and see what does it do. Like when we have pointers like this, does it do any good for us? Zero. Zero two uh, real syntax of pointers. All right, and let's make it a little okay. Save, 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 save. I have the utilities thingy over there in case we want to get an integer and. Um, I'm just going to leave this for you to see what did I do. So this header file is needed for that silly code of mine to run. Okay? It just remember I told you it's just a search, search and replace. Ta da! That's what I. That's what happens. So it simply searches for address of and put an ampersand instead. Searches for target of and put a, an asterisk. Searches for a pointer and put an asterisk. Next. What is the output of the following program? I'm just confusing the heck out of you. Let me just explain what happens. Let's walk through it. A variable is created, and it's initialized to 2, 3, 4, 5. Are we OK? Then the function set to 0 is called. Remember I told you always everything goes by copy? A copy of 2, 3, 4, 5 will go into A. So A becomes 2, 3, 4, 5, right? That 2, 3, 4, 5 copy 
at a becomes zero. Function ends, a dies, comes back over here, var remains 2345, 2345 is printed. Are we okay? Bad set, set to zero. Okay. Now I'm going to say void set to zero. And in here I'm going to say integer pointer p, let's say. And in here I'm going to say target of p is set to zero. Now all I need to do over here is say set to zero and pass the address of var and then print the var. What's the difference now? The second one we know. Nothing's going to happen. So when I run this beautiful program of mine three years later, hmm. when I run this program of mine, when it comes over here, we know that this is 2345, 2345. It goes to bad thingy. A becomes a copy of that one that is 2345. A will be set to 2345. The scope is done. A dies goes away, we come back over here, and var remains 2345. Nothing has changed. Correct? Now what's the difference? In here, in set to zero, I am sending the address of var in. So p will point to where var is, correct? Then I'm saying set the target of p to zero. What is the target of p? Var, right? Therefore, it will be overwritten with zero. We'll come over here, and when we print it, it's going to be zero. That is why you pass ampersand to scanf, but not printf. Because scanf needs to set variables to things, but printf doesn't need to. That is why you pass address of stuff when you want to change them. That is why you can manipulate values, many values in a function, without returning them. We said a function can return only one value. Does this function return anything? No! It does not return anything, but it has a remote control. It can change things outside of its territory. So this function doesn't return anything, but because it's receiving the variable and integer by address and not by value, it can change its content. And that's a good side effect of pointers. Are we okay with this? That's all the pointers are. Okay? That's, that's all you need to be able to program anything you want with pointers. For example, with a structure, when you pass a structure, a gigantic structure to a uh, to a function and you return it, you know how much memory, memory and how much uh, uh, space you're, you're wasting? Let's say you want to print a, a, a structure. You don't need to pass its address, right? You pass it, pass it by value. A structure has what? 500 characters in it? 500 bytes in it? It has to copy, allocate, create 500 bytes, rent it from the Holiday Inn, 500 bytes, put it over there, print it, and then clean it up and throw it away. All I need to do is to pass the address. Only four bytes will be passed to the function. It has access to everything. All I need to do is to make sure nothing is changed out there. So it can print it. So instead of that's another good side effect of it is is that, so this one is 0, 03, what to do with pointers? I have exactly two minutes. I don't know if I can manage that, but uh, let's see, let's see if I can, what did I do? Did I do something wrong? 
Oh, did I? Okay, that's a new version of pointer. <laughs> it's an easy way to out uh, in computer science all the time. Don't leave, don't leave, don't pack your stuff. Let me just finish this thing. Um, I had, to, where do they teach structures? Anybody knows? Ah, structures. Structure intro. Woohoo. Okay, there you go. I have a structure student. I'm going to use that. Copy. Actually, I'm going to copy the whole thing. Copy. I'm going to come over here. So, I set this. I want to set a structure, set a mark. Okay, so I'm going to say set student marks. So, uh, void set st mark. Okay, and I'm going to pass a structure student mark pointer to it, PTR. Okay, now this is uh, the second thing that you don't know. When you have a pointer, instead of target of pointer to a structure, there's a very cool uh, uh, operator created. So you don't, have, you don't have to do uh, asterisk stuff. Like if I want to actually do these things, I want to set, set that S. So I have to say set ST mark, and I have to put address of S, right, instead of doing that. Now I want to move all these things in here. And I want to set them. So I have to use PTR, correct? But PTR is the address, so I have to put target of PTR, correct? And then, because this is much more forceful than that one, I have to put parentheses around it. I have to say, target of PTR is mark. And because target of PTR is S, it's going to change it. But that's too many typing, right? Too much typing. So they said, instead of that, you can do this. Ta-da! Makes your life easy. Well, that's, that doesn't make it off easy. This does. Okay. There you go. So where is string header file? Let me put string header file in here. Include string.h. Now, the cool thing about it is that this that I have done, I wanted, it's not s actually, it's ptr. And nobody's saying anything. Everybody's like happy. Okay. <laughs> ptr. Okay. Okay, good. So now it actually is setting it. Okay, if I wanted to print this out to, let's say I want to have void print student mark, okay, I could pass a struct student mark s and just print everything, correct? But if I do that, then again, as I mentioned, so many memory, so much memory has to get occupied and passed. It's always better for a structure to be passed by address because it takes much less space. But it's, there is only one problem. So if I wanted to print this out, so anyway, so I, I would have something I print F, say mark percent D and GNU line, then I had to put over here PTR mark, right? And I keep going like that. The problem is that if by mistake I set some variable in mark, this print student mark is going to change it, right? That's not a good thing. We learned something at the beginning of the semester. We could create read-only variables, right? How do we create? You had it in your test. How do we create a read-only variable with? Const, right? So if you want to pass an address, but just to make it read only, to make sure you don't shoot yourself in the foot, you can always make it a const. That makes that pointer read only, which means if I want to actually, if by mistake I do this, it's going to tell me what the heck you're doing. See? It says it's constant. Extension must be, must, uh, expression must be a modifiable value. It's not. And it, it stops you. So whenever you want to pass a structure to a function to do something with it, always pass an address. If you want to modify it in there, make it a regular address, a regular pointer. If you do not want to modify it, make it a constant. Ta-da. 
that's the end of pointers, right to the end of, I think, this semester. Well, when you come in, I'm going to complete and talk about the next day you are coming in. We'll t we're going to talk about uh, uh, the relationship between pointers and arrays. Very important thing. Make sure you be here. Let me stop the recording.